Hello, uh, my name is Dennis from Peter's Marine, and today I have a Century Cruiser for you. It's a Model 7000, and I'm going to give you a, an overview of the boat, trailer, we'll take a walk inside. Uh, it is just me today, I don't have a cameraman with me, so I'm going to come over and grab the camera and then I'll, uh, I'll narrate through the video, but I'll take a walk through. Uh, so, let's take a look at it. The trailer is a aluminum I-beam. It's a float-on brand trailer, and it is meant to be fully, a fully uh, driven-on trailer. In other words, this boat uh, comes all the way onto the trailer, up to this aluminum bar, this catch bar here. And the person that is on the truck side never even has to get into the water. The boat comes on, it grabs that bar, it latches on, and then you drive off. Uh, the trailer is in good shape. It was recently driven from uh, Vermont. Uh, the boat actually is uh, in, in my family. It was my uncle's boat. Um, we had it since about the early 90s. Uh, and it was driven from Vermont to Maine. And then from Maine, where we had it stored for a little while, down here to Pennsylvania to, to sell it for him. Uh, probably a total of about seven or eight, maybe 800 miles altogether. Uh, trailer was fantastic. No, no problems at all with the, the trailer, uh, the brakes worked, everything seemed to be fine. Uh, so let's uh, take a walk out back there, take a walk down the side. Maybe I can back up enough. I do have a fisheye lens on here, so it's probably not giving you the best view of the boat. Um, the fisheye I have on there for when we get down to the cabin so you can see everything a little better. Uh, it's a good sized boat. It's uh, about 27 feet long. Uh, it's a trailable boat, so it's not over wide. So it's a, a really big, trailable boat, which is nice. If you, if you want to do some overnighting, uh, camping, this is a, a nice boat to be able to do that with because of the room that it offers, yet still is 100% legally trailable. Uh, back here, we got an Alpha Drive back here. Good shape. You can see the, give you a line of the skeg there. Prop. Stainless prop, obviously. It's in real nice shape. Uh, you know, there's, there's no corrosion on this at all. You, my uncle kept really good uh, care of this boat here. Just give you a good view there. <clears throat> um, it is set up for a kicker motor. Um, and a nice thing that he has set up um, inside in the, in the bilge, um, he has it set up with a automatic two-cycle oil mixing system. So if you have a two-cycle our two-stroke outboard back here. Uh, it'll run right off the onboard tank. You don't have to carry a portable tank and it will mix the oil automatically for it as well. Uh, so again, you don't have to do any mixing. All you got to do is turn a valve, turn the thing on and, and you've got a, a kicker. Uh, he was very safety conscious so um, he had always gone, gone around with a kicker just in case, an extra motor. So we got some nice teak back here, a nice teak platform. It's in good shape too. You have the teak steps coming in, and you have the, uh, the cockpit on this boat is not gigantic when you compare it to some of the other cruisers, but what you gain then is a lot more interior space. Uh, for the most part, it was just uh, him and my aunt, and they had uh, some dogs, um, so it was, they really only needed those two chairs, but you do have seating there, seating there, and the cockpit's nice and open, so of course you could have some deck chairs back here, or maybe a large cooler with a pad on it, and that could be your uh, your other chairs, your other seating, uh, the other seating uh, capabilities back here. So I'll come back this way. Let's see if I can give you a uh, quick view there. That's the power cord that goes with it, shore power. Take a quick look down in the bilge. Uh, there's some ropes that go along with it. Um, basically anything he left with the boat. Uh, there are service manuals for the engine, a service manual, Mercury, or Mercruiser Cruiser service manual for both the engine and the drive. Um, pretty much all the electronics and everything, all the uh, original manuals all go with the boat as well. Uh, well it's a little dark down there, but um, hopefully what you can make out is that Right there, this piece that's in the middle of the view with that hose coming to it, 
That is a freshwater cool, uh, cooled system, and it is a full system. Almost all freshwater cooled systems that you see uh, are usually just a half system. This one includes the manifolds in the system. So the manifolds are cooled by antifreeze, not raw water, whatever you're sitting in. Uh, so that is a really nice feature to have, not just the engine, but also the manifolds. Uh, he did also convert to a through-hole intake for the water with an engine-mounted impeller. So you saw the alpha drive on the outside. There is no impeller in there. It's a block off. Um, so maintenance is, is simpler with that as well. You don't have to pull the drive off to do that. Uh, as you can see, lots of room down there. And about, about the same amount of room on the other side as well. Uh, that's the automatic mixing system right there. There's a good amount of storage in the boat. Even just out here, you've got storage under both sides, both the captain's and the first mate side. Big storage boxes there. The storage in the floor is pretty darn big too. Hopefully you can kind of make it out. It's bigger than what you can, what you can see here, um, but it's about 16 inches deep or so. There's a couple spare props that come with it as well. And it looks like you get a fishing net too. But some really nice storage in the boat. Over here, there's another storage in front. Some storage back there. Uh, coming up to the to the helm here, uh, you've got indicators for your for your uh, trim tabs. You have an automatic uh, compass here. This will self compensate. Uh, so no matter where you are, it can uh, it'll. Uh, Compensate itself based on how far away you are from the North Pole, which is really nice. It's a real accurate compass. It's a nice, really nice setup. It's, there's not, uh, KVH is the brand. Um, they've, they've got some good products. Um, all the electronics work. Uh, this is a forward looking sonar, not just a depth finder or a fish finder, but it's a forward looking sonar. Most people don't know that you, any depth finder you have on the boat is taking your depth from the transom. In other words, it's taking your depth from where you've been, not where you're going. This looks forward and it uh, gives your depth not only straight down, but also forward so you can see any obstacles that might be in the water in front of you before you get to them. It's, got, it's a really nice feature. VHF radio, and that works as well. Uh, your trim tab controls are here. Uh, you have a spotlight up on the bow, up there. Uh, the only thing I found with the spotlight, the spotlight works at spot and flood. Uh, it goes up and down real easily. It moves very slowly left and right. It could be that because the boat sat for a few years that it just needs to be exercised more or maybe greased. Uh, I'm not really sure I didn't uh, uh, go into it too far. Um, but, uh, you know, it does physically function. It's just real slow left and right. But my guess is it could probably be fixed. Coming down into the cabin here, you have the two doors that'll close and then that piece pulls down over. And uh, this is again, our nice, some nice teak here. Just to give you an idea there. Um, and it will stay, uh, keep you weatherproof down, down below but still allow ventilation because these are open. But being angled down, they'll keep the water out. On the port side coming in, you've got your sink, hot and cold water. This is a dual burner stove. It's both electric, and I did check the electric works. Um, and if you lift the electric up, you get a dual burner alcohol stove. I didn't get a chance to check that, but I know it had been working the last time I used it. Uh, but this I did turn on, um, and I did see that that worked. Uh, you have sliding storage back here. Guess you get a couple coffee mugs with the boat too. Ventilation up top. Turn around. That's for a paper towel holder. Uh, there's a lot of boat manuals and uh, information is in that pack there. Um, here on the starboard side, across from the galley, is your dinette. And that's comfortable enough for, you can have uh, four people sitting around that. And if you have people staying, staying over with you, well, that table drops down 
onto this chalk here. And then these pieces come off and they'll use the table as the support. And these will sit on top of the table and give you an extra berth here, which is actually a pretty good size. Uh, headroom wise, there's quite a lot of headroom in here. I'm just under six, I'm probably about five, I'm about 5'11". And I've got, just kind of measuring above my head now, I've got a good six inches above my head and there's quite a bit of room to walk. You know, it's actually quite long in here. Again, because the cockpit's a little shorter, you get a lot more room down here in the cabin, which is really what this kind of boat is, is all about, is, is the cabin. That's uh, the way they use their boat. Uh, your V-berth here, storage under the, under the cushions on both sides. This is the filler cushion over there. This one here, of course, fills that area in to make this another bed as well. Very large opening hatch. Um, you know, my hands spread out like that is eight inches. So, and another four. So it's probably about 20 inches wide and it's quite a bit longer. One, two, 24, maybe 28 to 30 inches tall. Uh, so it makes it very easy to get up to the to the bow. I mean, it's, it's, it's quite large. Uh, you do have a head, little mirror, just your standard uh, portable toilet. Uh, it is set up with uh, pump out. Uh, that was one of the deck chairs that they used. Uh, they didn't have too many people on board too often. Uh, there's your hot and cold, and this is, a, this is a shower, you know, if you do want to use that. Medicine cabinet up top, more storage there, more storage down below. Uh, refrigerator down here, that does work. I turned that on, that was working fine. Uh, just to, it's, you know, to get into cruising, if that's something you're thinking of doing, this is a pretty good boat to take a look at. I mean, it does offer quite a lot. The boat itself is older, uh, it's an 82. Uh, cared for very well though. The engine was replaced by my uncle in uh, 94, 95, and it's a Merc Cruiser engine. Uh, not an aftermarket, it's a Merc Cruiser engine, 5.7, uh, fuel injected, uh, 260 horse. Um, moves the boat along well, certainly no speed demon, but then that's not what this boat is about. Um, this boat is about taking some cruises, extended cruises, being able to do that with a few people, um, and just getting out and enjoying some new places. Um, primarily the boat was used uh, in fresh water, occasional dips up in Maine in salt water, but not for very long up there. It was always uh, uh, flushed when it came out. But again, because you have your fresh water cooling, you know, the engine and the, uh, the manifolds were always uh, taken care of, you know, were always covered. You didn't have to worry about the salt water there. But looking around the boat, again, too, you know, you look at edges of things and, you know, there's no evidence of salt. I mean, it really wasn't used in salt much at all. Uh, the Bimini top that does have enclosures that go all the way around so you can enclose the boat in canvas and still be able to use the boat in inclement weather. So, um, anyways, that's a probably a little longer than I was expecting it to be. I hope you didn't get too bored there. I hope I was kind of steady with the with the camera and you didn't get sick. But uh, if you have any questions, give us a call here at uh, Peter's Marine. Uh, my name is Dennis, but you can talk to anybody here. Our number is 610-433-1606. And I uh, hope to hear from you. This is a nice, uh, a nice boat, nice um, economical way to get into cruising. Have a good day.